Hi everyone, Stepan here. Today I'm going to continue the endgame series with some of Tigran Petrosian's best endgames. And we're going to look at three games. Uh, each one is going to be uh, featuring a different type of endgame plan and endgame idea. And that's what I would like to highlight uh, in the video. So what you can see written on the screen that in, in endgames and especially in complex endgames, plans are much more important than moves is very true. And, and I remember reading that from Shereshevsky's endgame strategy for the first time. And and that's that's very true because you can sometimes restart the endgame. You have the option to go backwards and forwards uh, a few times. You don't have to hurry most of the time. And most of the time, if you find a good plan, uh, you will be able to execute it and time will not be of the essence. <clears throat> that being said, there are exact end games in which you have to calculate 25 forcing moves if it's a pawn race and both sides queen. But in complex end games, plans are more important and much more important most of the time. Okay, uh, the first game we are going to look at was played when Petrosian was 18, 19, when he was still young. It was played against Kalantar, who is a pretty much unknown <clears throat> Armenian player from Yerevan. Uh, he played Petrosian three times, lost three times. Okay, so this is uh, obviously a late middle game, end game uh, from either the Queen's Indian, the Nimzo Indian or the Bogo Indian. This this was the Bogo, but the structure should be very famili familiar. And if you, if White manages to play e5, then he usually does play for an advantage and should be better, especially because Black has doubled pawns and doesn't really have enough play on the b-file. So this position should be about equal. Uh, it's white to play, white plays knight f3. Petrosian retreats to e7 and now e5. White has managed to achieve what he wants to achieve and he only needs basically one more move. If it was white to play again, then white is undoubtedly better. Because, for example, if, if black plays a nothing move, then white can simply take. And after the exchange, he should be better uh, with this control over the e-file momentarily and he could start preparing b4 and the knight is still good and the, the position should be slightly, slightly better for white. However, after e5 it's black to play and Petrosian has time for the only move to keep equality in the position rook a8 so that now after e takes d6 he can exchange both rooks misplacing the knight and sort of restarting the endgame. And white's pawns are better, no doubt about that, uh, because he has this pawn break here. And very often, let me just show you something. Let's, let's just... something you have to bear in mind uh, for, for this endgame. So let's say black does nothing and white breaks through. He has a passed pawn. So at this point, whenever white manages to play b4, black has to take it. Now, if you take it with the a5 pawn, then a4 is always a passed pawn that black has to worry about. Of course, this is a hypothetical position. Bishop takes is possible. I know, but I'm just trying to show you the point. Also, if b4 and uh, you take it with this one, then c5 gives white a passed pawn on d6. Also, if b4 and you take it, black could exchange, and after you take, again, c5 gives white a passed pawn on d6. So that's something you have to, well, be aware of. So after after uh, e takes d6, white definitely has more options in this endgame, because black doesn't really, really have an option of creating a passed pawn or or a passed pawn or, or an outside passed pawn which is hard for the for the white king to catch because the only way for black to create a passed pawn is on the king side and the white king is here. But let's see what happens. It's equal but it's important to come up with a good plan and maybe black can do something. King f2 played, uh, now a great move. Many moves are possible here but Petrosian plays a very precise move, f5. This now gives his king away into the position of course, that's very important. The king wants to sit on e5 and it also grabs space. Okay, king e3, fine, king f7, uh, knight d3, uh, bishop to c8 was played in, in this position and preparing to, well, maybe target something here. Uh, b3 uh, and black would have provoked this either way uh, with, with bishop a6 so playing b3 is sort of prophylaxis g5 
king f3, king f6, everything very normal, king e3, bishop d7. Okay, now let's let's come up with a plan uh, for black. What do, what do you want to do? Uh, white can make progress, uh, and there's only one way to make progress for white, and it's to go knight b2, knight a4, and try to put pressure on black pawns with knight b6. Or, once the knight is on a4, maybe a sacrifice on c5 would give white a best pawn. So if, if the black king wanders too far forward in, in white's camp, then maybe that's possible. Uh, other than that, a3 and b4 is a way to make progress, and that could give white a best pawn. So, for example, a3 here, and I don't know, white, black plays h6 and b4. In this position, this is possible, and again, you leave yourself with the option to create a passed pawn and the knight could come into c6, etc. But uh, white plays king f3 and he waits, which I think is a mistake. If you turn on the engine, the engine is confused, it says it's equal, that's not important. You need a plan here for both sides and you need to know how you're trying to win. Because, because the position is equal, it's objectively equal. But both sides can still win, both sides have practical chances. And Petrosian had a plan and Mr. Kalantar did not, which is proven by king f3. And now his last move was bishop d7. Now I'd like to invite you to pause the video and come up, come up with a good plan. Okay, his plan is, is very simple. Uh, he wants to play bishop e8, bishop h5 check, get the bishop here and try to harass the pawns, or maybe uh, get the bishop to g6 and play f4 and get 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 the bishop to to b1 also once the king is on e5 maybe we can start chasing the white king uh, king away from from the king side so he starts with bishop e8 good king e3 white plays black white plays a nothing move waiting move and here h6 was played which is a waiting move he could have played bishop h5 straight away he could have played well, he could have played bishop g6 as well, going for this check, but h6 is a safe move. And now, okay, let's let's try to see whether white could get any counterplay. So in this position, white simply played king f3 and allowed bishop h5 check. So still waiting, not believing that Petrosian has something. Let's say knight b2 is played, and bishop h5, and knight a4, and king e5, and knight b6. So we know that... This is what white is trying to do, trying to get some play over here. But now f4, for example, and gf4, gf4, king f2, and bishop g4 just prevents that. And if instead of that a3 is played, well, I think black is just quick enough to prevent all counterplay. And eventually he's going to be able to create a passed pawn here, and probably bishop g6 is just a good move. But still, practically, white should have tried to do something. Even though he's not going to win, it's still going to be equal. And by putting pressure on your opponent and by trying to execute a plan, you are distracting your opponent from doing what from, from doing what he was trying to do. And by playing king e3, king f3, king e3, king f3, uh, his opponent is basically giving Petrosian a free hand. And, well, at least psychologically, it's easier to try and win this position now when you know that your opponent has just resigned to winning and he, he knows that it's a draw or thinks he's going to draw. Okay, bishop h5 check played. Uh, king e3, no surprise there, and bishop d1. Now it's it's getting complicated. Now obviously a3 cannot be played anymore and you don't have a way to, to complicate the position any further. Note that if you move the knight away, king e5 is possible and the king is coming into the position. If you move the king away, the bishop has to move, but then you are making your king worse. And there is a very nice maneuver here, which if you manage to pull off, you probably get a very easily winning position. So uh, I'll, I'll leave you with this position for a second, pause the video, and try to see what you would do on knight c1, on knight b2, on knight f2, on king d2. Those are the key moves basically. All knight moves are really not as good. Uh, they would allow bishop to uh, to c2, so knight anywhere allows bishop c2. Next move is going to be bishop b1, and we are controlling the entire board. What you have to figure out is is what do you, what do you do against king d2, and that's what happened. So I'm going to let you pause the video. 
Okay, now uh, there's only one winning idea here, and we talked about it before: bishop c8, bishop d7, bishop e8, bishop h5, and that's we want to get the bishop to b1. Once we get the bishop to b1, we are going to be able to enter the position with the king because the knight is going to have to move eventually, or the pawns are lost. So bishop f3, this is an excellent move, and what can you do here? Uh, as white, you have no way to prevent bishop e4 and, and, and this. So king e3 was played. I mean, it's a nothing move, but now there's really not much white could do. And bishop e4. And in this position, you if, if the knights are traded off, uh, what is the endgame like? That's what you have to know. So... It's all part of the plan. Petrosian knew that if, if if the knights, if the minor pieces are traded off, he knew that he, he is winning because the pawn endgame is simply winning. Why? Even though white is able to create a passed pawn, uh, that pawn is not going to be quick enough because black is going to be creating a passed pawn as well. And he's going to have this asset of, of, the, of the a5 pawn. I'm going to show you. So, for example, if knight c1 declining the trade, then bishop b1, you have to play something, so let's say you play king f3, and king e5. And if the knight goes back, you take it, so king e3, probably. And now f4, g takes, g takes, king f3, and king f5, zuk zwang. Basically, white is out of moves. Uh, let's say h3, h5, h4, you just wait, bishop c2, and, and that's it. If, for example, a3 is played, you can just wait and black uh, and and white has no moves so you go here for example and and that's it once the knight moves you can just do this and eventually uh, white just loses everything okay uh, and if after bishop e4 knight b2 is played trying to go for the same counterplay we looked at then bishop e1 a3 bishop a2 and again if b4 then a b4 a b4 cb4 and these pawns are not quick enough if if c5 we can just take it and we are catching the pawn if in this position after b4 uh you play a takes b4 and a4 is played then we just go back with the king and this pawn is is lost so the counterplay doesn't work so after bishop e4 uh white simply played king to d2 and this is now a lost king and pawn end game uh so we take it King takes and king e5, and this is all over. Now, uh, of course, if white is given time, he creates a passed pawn. However, white has to well take care of, of f4 and and f3, and the pawn is, is going home. So he plays king to e3, which is a good move. Uh, f4, gf, gf, king f3. Okay, pawn storm prevented. However, after king f5, uh, white has to make a move. He played king f2. If if a3, which is the move we would like to make, then h5, and let's say you you wait, let's say you wait with this move, and then here, and the king has to move. So now, yeah, you you're not you're not quick enough. Or after uh, after h5, then again king e5, and the king has to move. And bear in mind that white is not quick enough in this position. If b4 is played then we can just take here and we are much quicker to queening so this is a winning king and pawn end game eventually we're going to check this king here and make a second queen picking up all the pawns so white has to be extra careful with pushing his pawns so he doesn't push them instead he plays king f2 and now king e4 getting farther into the position king to e2 f3 check king to f2 king to f4 again suk zwang and now it's even worse if you try the same thing, uh, a3, b4, and, and stuff, you, you, you lose again because you're too slow. So let's see what happened. Uh, if, for example, if a3, this did not happen, that, then h5, and for example, b4, then a, b4. If you play a4, I play b3, and I just queen. Uh, if you take again, then again, I just queen before you queen, and then I checkmate you. So that doesn't work. So instead he played h4, uh, h5, and now he went for a3 because he's out of moves. Uh, king e4 played by, by Petrosian, b4 played, and that's that's it. 
uh, th this was the resignation. If after after king e4 you do try b4, then a takes b4 and a4 b3, and again it's the same story. So I I was impressed with how how well Petrosian played considering the nature of the position and considering that the position was objectively equal and that neither side really had winning chances uh, out of out of that end game and here if you look at this position white should be the one playing for an advantage and if, if okay i'm going to turn on the engine the engine says 0 0.000 i'm not joking uh, it's 0 0.000 you can set it up on your on your own board or if you're if you have the Patreon feed, you can find it on, on move 26, it's all zeros. But it's easier to play white because you, you have this pawn break idea, you have this you have this winning pawn break idea. Unfortunately for white, he just waited and, and then lost. Okay, uh, now we are going to look at two games from the World Championship match in 63, uh, in which Petrosian defeated Botvinnik, uh, 12 and a half, 9 and a half, became the World Champion and I think this is the first world championship after which there was no uh, rematch for the for the champion if he loses. So this is the first time Bot Botvinnik didn't get to play a rematch. So Petrosian was the world champion for the entire cycle with the uh, interzonals and the candidates and, and, and everything. So we start in this position and this is going to be a different type of plan. So here, first of all, it, it, Petrosian is white, he has to play b4. This not only saves the pawn, which was attacked twice, but it also fixes black's pawns, so that's that's great. Now, I'll quickly get to the important point in the next two games, or in this one and in the next one, because there's really only one thing I would like to highlight in each game. So we have king f7, bishop c3 fixes the pawn, that's very good. Bishop a3 attacks the rook, rook c2, all very logical. In this position, Botvinnik trades, which is okay, it's not a bad move. Uh, takes, takes, bishop b4, rook c2 and king e7. And after knight d2 uh, attacking the pawn, the pawn is forced to move forward. And it was clear after, after b4, c4, b5 that this pawn is going to be a problem. So after c3, I think Botvinnik was countering on counterplay on the king side in exchange for this pawn. But, okay, knight e4, uh, bishop a5, it's just a waiting move, uh, okay, and king to d3 attacks the pawn, and now there's a forcing line which Botvinnik was counting on, and that's rook to d8, meaning that the pawn cannot be taken immediately, and by the time the pawn is taken, now it is going to drop its attack three times. You could check again, but I'm king here and you're just wasting time. By the time the pawn is, is taken, black will have secured enough counterplay for a draw or maybe even for a win. This is what he was counting on. I'm going to go here and pick up the pawns. Okay, uh, Petrosian takes. Uh, rook h1 is played. And in this position, what would you do? Pause the video. You are white. Why did Petrosian allow this infiltration in exchange for a pawn? What would you do here? Okay, this is the key moment. Uh, he did not play h3. And for example, rook g1 and g3 and rook h1 and h4 and, and anything like that. He didn't do that. Uh, in fact, in this position, you could exchange here and try to somehow complicate matters and well do something probably well probably white wins uh, and should be better but it's not as good as what happened in the game instead he just allowed this pawn to be captured with the move knight e4 and here is the plan here is the great idea which i wanted to show you he doesn't care about this his knight on e4 defends the f2 pawn which is important you don't want to lose your entire second rank but these two pawns are not relevant why because of the b5 pawn, which has fixed these two weaknesses on a7 and on b6, all white has to do is play rook c7 and it's practically a winning endgame. This bishop is offside. If this rook starts taking pawns, it's going to take it one, two moves to get back into the game, at least, meaning that temporarily black is two pieces down. And with rook on c7, white is just going to start moving everything up. So let's, let's go back for a second. 
So we have this position after c3, where knight e4 was played, bishop a5, okay, king d3, and Botvinnik's plan get counterplay, king c4, rook d1, knight c3, rook h1. And he plays knight e4, and in this position, uh, Botvinnik fell for it, he took the pawn, lost the game straight away. What he should have done is rook d1. I'm going to show you why. This move is very important, because after rook takes pawn, all Petrosian did was play king to d4. And now you're never stopping me uh, from, from entering the position. You can play king to d7, but we are going to see that's actually the game continuation. As soon as this file is open, it's game over. What Botvinnik should have done is rook d1, and this simply prevents king d4. So, for example, king to b3, freeing up the rook this way, but this is not the same thing, rook b1 check. If you trade rooks, it's going to be a draw. Uh, and it's going to be very hard to beat this bishop with the knight. So in this position, you can play king a2. That would be a horrible blunder because of rook to b4. And in this position, you have no way to, to win this position anymore. Because after, for example, knight c3, then rook c4 attacks. And after king b3, rook b4 is just a draw. Or after rook b1, you can play king a3. And rook a1 check, king b3, rook b1 check, king c4. How do you win this position? Rook d1, again, preventing king d4. Then you can try king b3 and repeat, or you can play something like g3, and let's say h6, h4. But now again, it's not clear how you win. Probably white is, again, better. But practically speaking, this was the best fighting chance. You are preventing the plan white was going for. After knight e4, however, Botvinnik took the pawn and, and now his position collapses. King d4, king d7 preventing rook c7. But now there were two good moves. Botvinnik played pawn to g3 saving his pawn. The reality is you, he could have just given that pawn up as well because knight f6 is extremely strong. King e7 and now you continue king e5. And this is too much. You basically, with, with knight f6 check, you are simply preventing king d7 and allowing rook c7. So, for example, rook takes g2, rook c7 check, king d8, for example, rook h7, rook f2. doesn't really matter that, that black is picking up these pawns because he's, he's basically getting mated. And this would be completely lost. This is a sample variation I'd analyzed. Rook d2, rook h8, king c7, knight e8, king b7, knight d6, and now you have to give up you have to give up the exchange and you lose if you play king c7 then this is mate in one unfortunately petrosian did not finish in such great style with knight f6 he played g3 which is also okay bishop b4 king e5 the king is getting into the position the material is equal for the moment but knight f6 is going to happen or king f6 is going to happen so rook h5 king f6 let me just show you the final picture of beauty in this game uh, okay, rook e6, bishop d8, rook d6 check, king c8, king e8, look at the white king. Okay, the bishop is pinned, rook d1 has to save himself somehow. Knight g5, and the idea is, of course, I'm going to play knight e6, exchange all the pieces of the board, and then have a winning pawn endgame, king and pawn endgame. So rook d8 check, king f7, rook d7 check, and king g8, and in this position, uh, Botvinnik resigned and it, it's a late resignation. Of course, if you, if you check me again, I win your pawn. If you move the pawn, then knight e6. And that's it. So, for example, h5. It's a nothing move. You just trade everything off. And you start picking up these pawns. Uh, that, that's it. There's not much to do about this. This is a completely winning uh, endgame. Okay, so Botvinnik resigned after king to g8. So the idea in this position was this plan to infiltrate along the c-file. So after the pawn had dropped, knight takes c3, rook h1, and knight e4, this was a great plan. Okay, this was game 5 uh, of the match. Now let's have a look at game 15. Uh, this position, I would like to ask you to pause the video and come up with a plan. This is the hardest one, and this should be hard. Uh, I think... It was really hard for me when I was trying to do this, and I was analyzing this position with guess the move. So guess the move is a training method I use that I cover the, the, the game moves and play for one side. So when c5 was played, 
by Botvinnik in this game, I was guessing the move for, for Petrosian, and I did not come up with the correct plan. I came up with the correct move, but not because, not for the correct reasons. Okay, so come up, come up with with a good plan for uh, for White. Okay, so here's the thing, which I realized after I was, after I looked at the game, after I went through some more moves. There's only one problem in this position for white, and that's the fact that black is controlling the only open file. If you play rook d1 and challenge the rook, then probably black is better with this potential passed pawn, and the knight could blockade on e5. Probably it's a draw, but maybe, maybe black is better. But what if you open up another file? And that, that was the genius part. So the move is a5, and the plan is force black to give you the a file, and you play rook a1 and infiltrate on a7 or a8, depending on what black does. The great thing is I found I found the move a5, but I, I didn't do it to, to, to occupy the a file. There is no way to stop the a file from being open. If you play b takes a5, then rook a1 and white is objectively better fairly cl close to winning there's no way to defend these pawns and they're all going to drop off if you try closing the position down with b5 then there's a killer move a6 and of course rook d6 is prevented so you try rook c8 playing for rook c6 and maybe c4 but rook d1 and if you play rook c6 i play rook d7 so you lose if you play c4 for example i play rook d7 and you lose you have to defend the knight you have to defend the pawn and this is just busted. So against a5, you are basically forced to play rook d7 and you have to defend your 7th rank. But now a, b, a, b, and rook a1. And now each player is controlling one file. The problem is white's rook is way more active because the black king is not here. The black king is not preventing rook a8 and rook a7. Whereas the black rook doesn't really have good infiltration squares. You could come into d4, but that's not really as important. So let's just quickly look at what happened. King g7, rook a6, attacks the pawn, rook b7, rook a8. And now all Peter Sian does is he improves his pieces, gets his king into the middle of black's position, and then Botvinnik resigns. King f6, rook c8. He doesn't trade, he plays king e3. Uh, rook c6 check, king f7, e5, preventing knight f6, rook f6 check, king e4. Look at what black is doing. Black is waiting, and white's pieces are coming forward. b5, rook c6, preventing c4, king f7, and rook takes c5. And I'm not going to show you this position anymore. There was no way to save the to save the pawn if you if you instead if you advance your pawn then. Yeah, you basically have no way to to cause any tricks here because of bishop c1 and bishop b2. So the key idea was to know what you're trying to do and what, what the problem in the position was. The problem is black's rook is better than white's. Black has a 3 to 2 pawn majority and all the other files are closed. With a5 you, you just turn the tables around completely. Now, if you turn on the engine in this position, it's going to say that white is better, about plus one. And then with perfect play by, by black, 10 moves later, it's plus three. Because it's for humans, this is easy to win after you see a5 and the reason behind a5. Okay, uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed these three ideas. Uh, I, I, I found them instructive. I hope you did as well. Let me know what you think. If you have any questions, leave them below and stay tuned for more chess. Bye-bye.